Are you thinking about buying a new set of watercolours but can't make a choice? In this review I will give my opinion on the Winsor & Newton 45 half pan studio set and I will also create several test samples. I have seen lots of artists use this range and they have achieved good results so I thought I would try them for myself rather than testing alternative more expensive brands. I will also be testing the silver black velvet watercolour brushes as again this is a brand that seems to be mid-range at the time of filming and many artists seem to achieve good results with these brushes. So let's get on with the review. So now we're going to move into the unboxing. This is sped up so that we can get through everything in today's review. So you will see that on the box the watercolour box is really high quality resistant plastic. It folds out so that you have two palettes and you have a space for your brush. All of the pans are individually wrapped and you have a leaflet to show you all of the colours and what they should look like and information about the paints on the back. The palettes actually clip off for easy cleaning and this is really handy for at the end of a session if you want to clean because obviously if you are cleaning with them attached to the palette that could be quite messy and can damage your paints so it's really useful to have that facility to clip them on and off for easy cleaning really good design facility there all of these palettes or pans um, are numbered and the numbers are actually printed on the plastic so that's quite useful for when you want to order in the future now one thing I wanted to show you this is another palette that I have here um, from another company I wanted to show you that if you wanted to in the future if you have um, other brands that you wanted to use and you wanted to place them in you can do that quite easily so I just wanted to show you that that is an alternative if that's something that you wanted to do so overnight I've been busy removing all of the labels from the pan but I discovered that the packaging changes somewhat because the pans move around. Now it hasn't been that considerable um, when you open them but they still do move around. You'll notice that there's five that haven't been unwrapped that's because they're duplicates. So it's quite handy that you have five duplicates in the pack. And with the ones I opened, I have made this page where I'm going to paint all of the colours so that we can see what they look like. I'm going to attempt to make quite a dark mix. Um, so I'll be adding a minimal amount of water. And as mentioned earlier, I will be testing out the silver velvet brushes. Now, I'm going to speed this session up for the simple reason that it did take an hour or so to paint all of these samples. So um, I will run through all the colours individually. So the first colour is lemon yellow, then cadmium yellow, then gamboge hue, and then it's cadmium yellow. So we're, get, we're running through them really quickly, but that's because I've sped it up considerably. But it's just to give you an idea of what the colours look like. As I said, that next one is cadmium orange hue. And then you've got cadmium red pale hue. One thing that I really like about this set is the versatility because you can take them out, swap them, as I said, with paints that you already have. Or if you wanted to make yourself a little travel set with a box that you already have, you could already, always do this. So those last three colours were cadmium red hue, cadmium red deep hue and alizarin crimson. And then we move on to permanent rose. So that last colour was rose madder hue. We then move on to purple lake. Next is mauve and then diazonine purple. As I mentioned earlier, I'm not using much watercolours with this mix because I wanted to show the vibrancy of the colours and as bright as they could get if you wanted them to. Now, I'm not a pure watercolour specialist. 
Um, I work mainly with other mediums such as acrylics and oil pastels, mediums like that. But these paints seem as good as more expensive brands that I have used in the past. Um, just to go through the past five colours that have appeared on the screen. So they are ultramarine, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, turquoise, intense blue, otherwise known as thalo blue, and then Prussian blue. And now it is intense green, otherwise known as thalo green. And this is now Viridian Hue. Um, if you're someone who's starting on your watercolour journey, um, so someone like a homeschooler, a hobbyist, or someone that's just likes experimenting with watercolours, this could be the set for you. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this set and one of the really expensive sets that are going to cost you in the region of £100. This is really good value. Um, remember, the links are in the description below if you wanted to buy these or the brushes that I'm using in today's demonstration. So we now have on the sheet emerald, hooker's green dark, hooker's green light, sap green, raw sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber and burnt sienna. When I was painting there didn't seem to be much granulation in the paint and the paints as you can see are highly pigmented in comparison to some of the paints I've used before. And for the money, I feel that they're a really nice range of vibrant colours and highly saturated. So we now have light red, Indian red, burnt umber and Van Dyke brown. Sepia. Indigo, Payne's Grey, Ivory Black, and Lamp Black. So here is the finished colour chart. If you were to buy this set of paints, I would highly recommend that you produce a colour chart like this for the simple reason that it's good for you to refer back to when you are producing a painting. Just for example, if you're painting a landscape, you can look at the colours and make sure that you are selecting the right colours for your painting. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out, the vibrancy of the colours, and I'm looking forward to producing more paintings using this range of colours. So now we're going to move on to the portrait sketch. I will stress that this is a sketch. It's not very detailed. It's just to show... Um, the capacities of the paint. Um, I've started on with wet on wet and I had a light pencil sketch from the image that is on the top right of the screen which I got from Pixabay and the link is in the description below if you wanted to work with this or look at it to get some any, any other portrait images. Um, and I've started this by painting the background first with the green hues just um, hinting at the hues that are in the image um, because as I've said I'm not adding too much detail into this I just want to get an idea of what the paint is like using wet on wet just a couple of layers I'm not adding too many layers and I'm working on arches watercolor paper links are in the description below <laughs>
So as I stated previously, this portrait wasn't meant to be detailed. It was only intended to be a sketch just to experiment with the paints, see how they reacted with the arches paper and how they reacted to the layering. And overall, I'm pleased with the results. Um, and I will experiment further with them in forthcoming tutorials. So in conclusion, if you are on a budget and are debating which paint set to go for, then this set could be for you, as there is no point spending all that extra money to get less colours. But also, what would be the point in spending all that money on paint if there is not much difference in the quality? I'll also say that I've seen several high profile artists use these paints, and if they're good enough for them, why would they not be good enough for you? I also didn't have to use much colour to mix the colours overall, and I would definitely definitely recommend them so i will leave a link in the description below for all the products used in today's clips one really fantastic feature of this palette was the pa removable palettes that you could take off for washing finally the paint brushes um, the black silver velvet paint brushes that i used in today's de demonstration they held a lot of the paint for a long period of time which i found really useful they're made of synthetic fibres and natural squirrel hair, which meant that they work much better than many other brushes that I've used in the past. And the main positive feature of these brushes was that they held the paint really well. If you found this review useful, make sure you check out the watercolour and review playlist, where you will find tutorials that will help improve your interests. Don't forget that the links to all the resources used in today's tutorial are in the description below. And if you would like to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of future content. Until next time, stay safe.